Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay, and joining us today is Greg Gordon. He's coming to us from the McClatchy offices in Washington, D.C. Thanks for joining us, Greg. Glad to be with you. So, Greg, you've just completed a brilliant, I think, piece of investigative journalism on Goldman Sachs and the subprime mortgage scandal. And in it, you say this. Goldman's sell-off and its clandestine wagers, completed at the brink of the housing market meltdown, enabled one of the nation's premier investment banks to pass most of its potential losses to others before a flood of mortgage loan defaults staggered the U.S. and global economies. So, Greg, what did you find out in your investigation? How, did, how and why did Goldman do this? We were uh, always wondering uh, how it could be that Goldman Sachs, of all the Wall Street firms, that Goldman Sachs uh, got out of the subprime lending business uh, and basically took, you know, minor losses and escaped relatively intact while uh, other Wall Street firms were melting down. So we tried to piece together uh, the events surrounding its uh, sales of, of uh, subprime mortgage uh, securities uh, and related securities in 2006 and 2007 before everything kind of uh, uh, fell apart and unraveled uh, in this industry. And essentially, uh, there were two tracks going on. Uh, Goldman was buying these mortgages from uh, some pretty high-flying uh, lending companies, uh, many of them out in California, and it was packaging them into securities and selling them to institutional investors. These would be pension funds, uh, foreign banks, uh, union health funds, and these investors were getting what they thought were AAA securities, AAA bonds that paid high yields and that would be safe. But actually, what, it, what had happened, as we all know now, is that these uh, mortgage, underlying mortgages that were backing up these bonds were, were not that far from junk. Uh, and when the default rates uh, erupted, we had the meltdown that, that occurred in, in the fall of 2008. Now, you, you point out in one, of your, in one of the pieces in the series that a, most of the people involved in this focused on California and Florida because they thought real estate prices would just go up forever, and it didn't matter if people defaulted because you could just resell the house for, uh, for a profit. Uh, so Goldman, for quite a while, must have believed they had drunk the Kool-Aid themselves on this, and thought there's really no downside. But at some point they realize, hey, this is Kool-Aid, and they decide to get out. And one of the people you interview talks about, uh, this looks so damaging that it appeared that the firm was actually going to dump these investments, thinking that they're going to become toxic waste. So when does Goldman realize this, and what exactly do they do? You know, that's, a, that's really the, the $64,000 question of the, of the whole uh, uh, saga, Paul, because uh, Goldman says that, the, that it had a meeting, a high-level meeting, in December of 2006 after 10 straight days of, of losses in its mortgage business. And they then decided that they were going to start to sell off their, their subprime bonds. We'll call them subprime bonds. They include more than that. And they were going to stop buying mortgages. Uh, that, the, the date of that decision is elusive. Goldman won't uh, part with that information. Uh, and at the same time, and, but actually earlier, Goldman began making what we describe as secret bets that the housing market would, would tank, essentially, and the value of these bonds would plummet so that they were hedging themselves, as Wall Street firms like to say, uh, hedging their risks. So the timing of all of this uh, is, is more elusive uh, than I'd like it to be as a reporter, but we know that in 2005 and 2006, Goldman bought $20 billion worth, worth of uh, protection from the big insurer AIG, the American International Group, which we all know later melted down. And so they had $20 billion in opposite bets all through 2006 and into early 2007 when they offered their last subprime bonds. Now, let me ask you, when AIG melted, gets the bailout money, and then they pay Goldman Sachs its insur what the, the offer on the insurance policy, is part of it this money? Uh, yes. They had $20 billion, and, and when things started to sour uh, in 2007 and 2008, Goldman started to uh, demand 
from AIG that it post collateral because this was part of the deal that if the underlying assets deteriorated in value, AIG had to put up corresponding collateral. So what happened is that uh, AIG put up seven and a half billion dollars. Goldman wanted 10, and so they went and bought some other insurance elsewhere to cover the, the difference. And then as, as time went along, uh, uh, things just got worse and worse. And in, in the fall of September of 2008, when AIG uh, was about to uh, go up in flames and the government came to the rescue, not long after that, the, a decision was made to pay off all these uh, uh, subprime mortgage-related um, uh, insurance bets that uh, that, gold, that AIG had taken. See, AIG made a, a dreadful mistake. It did not go out and reinsure these bets because it assumed that the housing market would just keep going up forever and th that they were just uh, collecting premiums every year from all these big banks and investment banks that were, that were uh, trying to cover themselves. So AIG ended up holding the bag and it paid out $12.9 billion to Goldman, of which, for, for various uh, uh, contracts and arrangements it, that it owed money to Goldman uh, for, uh, and, and this included over $8 billion more related to these mortgage securities and the protection that Goldman had bought. So Goldman had that protection, but it was much more than that. They had made, uh, they began making, after this meeting in December of 2006, many more uh, secret wagers, we call them, uh, secret little insurance policy arrangements with hundreds of counterparties, some on behalf of Goldman's clients and some to protect its own, uh, uh, you know, coffers. And then in early 2007, if not sooner, uh, Goldman mortgage traders started making short sales of, against subprime bonds on a private market in London where these uh, exotic bets could be made using uh, an instrument called the credit default swap. And it's these swaps that are really are at the heart of the whole um, escalation of the risk that, that, the, that Wall Street took and that banks around the world took because the swap market became a $16 trillion market just in the United States and over $60 trillion worldwide. So one of the issues, the key issues for us was Okay, so if you can do all this trading and these credit default swaps and you're out peddling these bonds to institutions like pension funds and insurance companies, don't you have to tell the insurance uh, companies before they buy the bonds that you've bet the other way with these secret swaps? And this is an issue that uh, is being debated among the uh, securities law experts that we spoke with. And some feel, you know, the key is, what did Goldman Sachs know at the time? Goldman says, we had the same information as everybody else. But that's not true. Goldman was working with the lenders. They had a level of detail of what's behind these loans that no one else could have had. Well, I think uh, one would argue that all of the Wall Street firms uh, knew, knew quite a lot about the quality. No, I, I'm of talking loans. more with the people that when Goldman sells some of the stuff to pension funds and to some of their clients that are not in, in the business, how are they supposed to know that what they're buying is junk when Goldman clearly knew? And this, this, these bonds, these, and, and there were more than bonds, there were some instruments that they, that they sold offshore. Uh, as well, and they, we're talking tens of billions of dollars of those. Well, in the, in the next part of our interview, we're going to drill into the offshore piece of this puzzle. Right. So let's do that in part two, and I encourage everybody to read Greg's uh, uh, series, and you'll find a link to it. Uh, you, uh, you'll find it below the video on the McClatchy page. You'll find a link to it on the Real News page. And please join us for the continuation of our interview with Greg Gordon.